Symphony of the Seas made big headlines around the world during its inauguration, as it should have been. There is much fanfare surrounding the ship, which is quite natural. Owned and operated by cruise industry leader Royal Caribbean International, the ship cost the company a whopping $1.35 billion, making it one of the costliest cruise ships ever built. A part of this enormous amount was spent by Royal Caribbean in integrating some of the best waste management systems on the planet. Royal Caribbean truly meant the ship to be one of the greatest ever, not just from the end of its gross tonnage, but also in its state-of-the-art technology on board. The cruise industry has long been labeled to have some of the worst waste management practices. The industry has been grappling with this factor for quite a time now. In 2019, Royal Caribbean was slapped with a hefty $20 million fine for illegal disposition of plastic waste. Since then, Royal Caribbean has set out to make an exception of this, with all its Oasis-class ships integrating the same technology on board. Royal Caribbean has said that the humongous structure is a zero landfill ship meaning they deal with their own waste, ranging all the way from recycling to water filtration. On board, the ship has a designated waste and recycling center. The designated crew regularly check all of the ship's trash cans, bringing them to the center for further recycling. Teams are designated for the purpose of segregation and dealing with incoming waste materials that can be recycled ranging from glasses to metal pieces. For waste incineration, the ship has a separate room, which is looked after 24-7 by 10 designated crew members. They differentiate glass based on its color green, brown and white. It is then sent for being crushed. The incinerator is a mega factory in itself, but despite all the activities, the place is unusually quiet. There's a compactor on board for processing plastic waste. This compactor crushes approximately 528 gallons of water bottles. Fast forwarding to the garbage area. Company officials store the waste for some seven days which is the usual time for a one-way trip of the cruise, before docking in Miami. Once in Miami, plastic, aluminum, paper, and glass are sent for being recycled to the designated partners. During the 2018 period of sailing, some 43.7 million pounds of waste had been recycled by Royal Caribbean, as per company officials. This is for solid waste alone. Now you might ask, what about the wasted food? Royal Caribbean officials figured out a way for this too. The ship has a total of 36 kitchens combining all of the ship's restaurants as well as its galley. The chefs segregate food scraps into different buckets, which is then put into a big pipe. This pipe leads to the ship's hydro processor. Here, the food waste is incinerated, reducing the overall volume of the waste on board. Reducing waste is an economic method employed by the company as large wastes being carried around means more will be unnecessary fuel usage. By a 3 to 1 margin cruise passengers want the industry to stop dumping human waste into the ocean, according to a new poll released today by Oceana, an international advocacy organization dedicated to restoring and protecting the world's oceans. The poll revealed that 6 out of 10 cruise customers are willing to pay a premium to be reassured that raw sewage is never dumped from cruise liners into the ocean. More than 90% of this group of cruises said that they would be willing to pay a premium of more than $25, if it meant that cruise lines had adopted sound environmental policies that would help keep the oceans clean. Oceana's analysis suggests that $25 per passenger would be more than enough to cover fleet-wide upgrades to new waste treatment technology. Cruise ships are exempt from the discharge permitting program of the Clean Water Act, the law that cities and pollution producing industries must follow. Cruise ships are not required to have permits to dump raw sewage into the ocean and are not required to monitor or report what they release. 
As a result, neither the government nor the public know how much pollution is released, and there are no means for citizen enforcement. Cruise passengers are appalled to learn about this problem and want the cruise industry to take responsibility for ending this needless pollution, said Jackie Sabbats, senior scientist at Oceana. Sewage dumping is 100% preventable with cost-effective technology and the cruise industry should be responsive to its customers' concerns and keep our oceans healthy and clean. An average-sized cruise ship with 3,000 passengers and crew produces 30,000 gallons of sewage every day and 255,000 gallons of dirty water from shower, sinks, laundries, and dishwashers. This waste not only carries bacteria and viruses that are harmful to human health, but can also sicken and kill marine life, including corals. U.S. law allows cruise ships to dump raw sewage in the ocean once a ship is more than three miles off U.S. shores. Ships can dump treated sewage anywhere in the ocean except in Alaskan waters, where companies must comply with higher state standards. This poll indicates that cruise customers' initially favorable impressions of cruises do not prevent them from being outraged by the industry's practices that pollute the ocean, said Alan Quinlan, president of Greenberg Quinlan Rossner Research, Inc. Cruise customers want strong actions taken to reduce ocean pollution. More than 90% of those surveyed support a requirement for cruise ships to upgrade their onboard waste treatment facilities to more fully treat sewage before it is released into the sea. Oceana calls on cruise ship companies to take responsibility for the passengers' health and the health of the oceans by upgrading to state-of-the-art sewage treatment technology fleet-wide, said Moose Sabbats. New technology is being used effectively, but only on a few ships that cruise in Alaskan waters, the only place the laws require it. But this poll shows that customers want to see all of our oceans protected, not just ocean waters in Alaska. Oceana is a non-profit international advocacy organization dedicated to protecting and restoring the world's oceans through policy advocacy, science, law and public education. Founded in 2001, Oceana's constituency includes members and activists from more than 150 countries and territories who are committed to saving the world's marine environment. In 2002, the American Oceans Campaign became part of Oceana's international effort to protect ocean ecosystems.